Stacy was very intelligent and she picks up very quickly. She always wanted to be a paralegal or a lawyer and she was taking the courses in high school that she needed and then she met Michael Wallace, her first husband. He swept her off her feet. Mike was the love of my life. I knew five minutes after I met him that I was going to marry him. They went together about three years before they got married. And what was that wedding like? It was at home. It was small. She was as happy as she had ever been. Mike was the life of the party. Mike was larger than life. If you needed something that Mike had, he would give it to you. When Michael was good, Michael was very, very good. And when Michael was bad, he was very, very bad. We're talking about drugs? Yes. Alcohol? Yes. He had a problem with both for a long time in his life. They decide to have children. Ashley is their first child. I would say that Ashley and I were best friends. Oh, I was in love. You know, I knew from that minute on, my whole reason for being here was to take care of her. We did everything together. Three years later, they would have another baby, Bree, and she would become Michael's little princess. Bree was daddy's little angel. Bree could do no wrong in Michael's eye. Bree could walk on water. What about Ashley? There was no talk of any relationship with Ashley and Michael ever, because that's all Stacy ever talked about. Mike can Bree, Mike can Bree. Michael was extremely close to our second daughter, very close. Do you think that that might have created problems for Ashley? Did she know that her father was closer to her younger sister? Yes, yes, I, I know she did. And I think on some levels, definitely that hurt her. Could you see it as a mom? Yeah, everybody around could tell that, could see that. Did you think that she had harbored any ill will toward her father because of that? I don't know. I can't answer that. How did you feel about your dad? I loved my dad. He was the only father that was allowed to go on Girl Scout camping trips with me. Half the reason I got most of my badges was because of him. What happened? What's your last name, sir? Stacy was working as an ambulance dispatcher, and Michael was a mechanic. He worked different shifts than I did. I would work mornings, he would work 3 to 11. So I was gone all day, and he would be home with the kids. So there were really barely any times where we were all together. There were things that were starting to strain that relationship. Michael had had affairs before we were married, and I'm sure he did after. I think after a while, he wore out his welcome with Stacy. And after a few years of marriage, Stacy had confidentially told friends that she was contemplating divorce. Stacy came to me right after Thanksgiving time and she said, Kim, I really want to leave Mike. What do I do? And I gave her the name of my attorney. But with the holidays coming up, she doesn't think that it's a good time. It's almost Christmas time. I don't want to upset the household before the holidays. I understand. Wait till the first of the year. And then Mike got sick. That December of 1999, around the holidays, Michael Wallace was ill. He had been staggering. He didn't feel well. He didn't look well. He was spending a lot of time in bed. He was having a hard time walking, and he was having a hard time talking. And one time he sat up and he just vomited across the coffee table and laid back down and went back to sleep like nothing ever happened. Just as people were thinking maybe he should go to the doctor, he took a turn for the worst. I came home and I called my mom to tell her that I was home. And he was laying on the couch and he was making funny faces. Well, what I thought were funny faces. I got off the phone with her and I turned the TV on and all of a sudden, he just sticks his arm up in the air and like puts his arm on his side and then his arm just fell down and by that time I had to go get my sister from school. 
So Michael Wallace lays down on the sofa there in the family home and dies. It was scary. He was just sitting there, what I thought was fine, and he wasn't okay. By the time they got him to the hospital and I got up there, there was three physicians in the ER that said he had a heart attack. When his doctor told me that they believed he died of a heart attack, I believed that. There was no reason for me to question that. Even though he was 38, they do die of heart attacks at that age. It would seem like a perfectly obvious thing to autopsy a grown man who's healthy, who lays down on his couch and dies. But doctors told Stacy they thought it was a heart attack. She says, that's good enough for me. Stacy Castor wanted no part of that, no autopsy. How did Ashley react to her father's death? Uh, she blamed herself for a long time, uh, said that it was her fault that her father had died. Why would she say that? I don't know. I didn't know that he was having a heart attack or I didn't know what was going on. I was 11. Stacy Castor collected a $50,000 life insurance policy on her first husband. She paid for the funeral expenses, and then she took the girls to Disney World. And after that, it was just the three of them. We all used to eat dinner together, like, and laugh and joke around. Like, it just used to be me, her, and my sister. Like, we were all of us girls, and we did a lot of things together. She claimed that he had all sorts of medical issues. We went and got his medical records. The worst thing that ever happened to him was he had a hernia. And we couldn't come up with anything that showed that he had heart disease like she claimed. We decided to take a harder look at Michael Wallace's death. One of the incredible things, too, is that they're buried right next to each other in this cemetery right outside Syracuse, New York. And Detective Spinelli can't get this out of his mind. He wants to know, is this guy buried six feet under with those same telltale crystals from antifreeze? Detective Spinelli is convinced that there's really only one way to find out. That's to dig him up, to exhume the body. But this would be hugely controversial. Exhuming a body years later is very unusual. It's not like investigators go around to graveyards every day and dig bodies up. Not many judges are going to let you dig up a deceased person just because you have a whim. But we were able to convince the district attorney in Cuba County that this was indeed a homicide of David Castor, and we believe that Michael Wallace met the same demise. I remember thinking, when Michael Wallace's casket came out of the ground, I wonder if he's saying, it's about time you guys are looking at this, because I didn't just die on my own. So they decide to exhume his body, and that's when the trouble for Stacy Castor really starts. <laughs>